it we have a few Mario fans here in the audience. Yeah. All right, show of hands, whose favorite game is Mario Galaxy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, what about Super Mario Brothers 3? Yeah. Super Mario World? Yeah. What about Sunshine? Yeah. yeah, all right, well, we have here a wonderful guest. You know him as Mario, Wario, Waluigi, Luigi, Baby Mario, and Baby Luigi. We've got the wonderful Mr. Charles Martinet here. Welcome. Oh, I'm sorry, I can switch places. No, it's all good. All right. All right. First of all, let me say, hello, it's -a me, Mario. Mamma mia, you guys, you number one. Woohoo! And thank you for playing my games. Oh, yeah, Luigi number one. Ho ho. And Wario, have a rotten day. Yahoo. <laughs> Wait, I forgot mommy said say something nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there. And Waluigi, everybody cheat but me. <laughs> and baby Luigi. And baby Mario, let's go. Woohoo! Hi. Hi. First of all, I want to say thank you so much, everybody, for coming today. Many, many thanks always to Nintendo for giving me the chance to play these wonderful characters that I fell in love with first 31 years ago and have been in love with deeper and deeper every year of my life. And thank you so much to the con for bringing me out here. This is, you know, really, really Momocon. It's so much fun. Great to be in Atlanta. And most of all, thank you to all of you. Because you enjoy the games, you, you give me the life that I love so much, going around the world <clears throat> and meeting fellow Mario fans. So thank you so much. <laughs> Real pleasure. Well, thank you so, so much for being here. And speaking of going around the world, I know you travel a good bit. Yes, I do. Now, what if you were to travel to any Mario location? <laughs> Where would you like to go? Well, you know, actually, it was funny because I just spent a, a few weeks in Egypt, you know, which is kind of <laughs> like a Mario Odyssey sort of location, isn't it? And uh, that, that was really amazing. We flew uh, from, uh, uh, from Dubai where I did a show in Abu Dhabi. We spent some time on a resort and then went to Dubai and then flew to Egypt and stayed in Cairo, right? A, you know, in, in the place where uh, Roosevelt and Churchill had met to sign documents following the end of World War II, I think. Um, and uh, we stayed in this place, uh, the Mina Hotel, where you can look out your back window and there are the two of the great pyramids of Giza. And we just sat and marveled at that, and when you eat lunch or breakfast, you sit by the, the fountain that is reflecting the, the pyramids. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. So, and then we went to uh, the, the, uh, the old uh, museum in Cairo, the old Egyptian Cairo Museum, uh, which is like, it's like a, a Indiana Jones sort of thing. There are crates, they have six million items, and at any time they're only displaying something like 60,000. So it's like, this, tremendous turnover, but you've got these crates with dust all over them and inside a mummy. It's just, then they let your imagination go wild. And it, it's a, we then went to Aswan and Luxor and saw a, a temple where they sort of mummified crocodiles uh, from the Nile, where they're, they're no longer at that part, but they were then. And that was to sort of like appease the gods so they wouldn't eat the kids, you know? It's a very good idea, you know, really. Uh, <laughs> Please don't eat the children. Let's mummify you first. Um, so so they, they, then we went down to this amazing place called Abu Simbel. And Abu Simbel was the name of an eight-year-old child who grabbed an archaeologist and said, hey, come on, let me show you this thing. And he went and took them to this uh, amazing monument that, that um, Ramses VI had carved into the mountain, well not him, he didn't do a lot of carving, carved it into the mountain with he and his wife and uh, three gods on the outside and then you go into this door and there are four gods on either side and behind them all kinds of hieroglyphs and the, the turkey buzzards on the, uh, on the, uh, the, the ceilings I, that I guess represent the transition to death. And then through that, there's an antechamber through that hallway 
And in that, there is Ramses, his wife, and a, a god, and then another god here, and then the god of darkness here. And two days a year, February 21st and, and uh, October 21st, the, the day he was coronated and the day he was born, the sunlight goes through that front door all the way to the antechamber, lights Ramses, his wife, the other god, the other god, and the only one that doesn't get light on him is the, is the god of darkness. I mean, it, it's amazing. So there they are building this dam in Aswan, the, Asw the great Aswan Dam, which changed Egypt forever. But there's this little, you know, this, this amazing monument that's going to get flooded. So the, the Heritage Foundation of the United Nations decided to carve it out of the mountain and pick it up and put it higher up so that people could go see it. And they did this. They carved it out. They helicoptered things. They carried things. They did everything to move it up, stuck it in p position. And today, they missed it by one day. Now it's February 22nd and October 22nd that the light goes through. And these guys had carved it into a mountain. Imagine this, the, the knowledge that you have to do that thousands of years ago. So yes, travel is a passion of mine. <laughs> it's great. And we flew in too. Here's the big secret if you ever go. Fly in, don't drive in, because you drive in, because it's near Sudan, so you know there's always the worry about issues and cars. So you, if you drive in, you leave at 3 o'clock in the morning from Aswan, and then you get there at like 7 o'clock in the morning, you spend an hour, and then you get back in the car. But everybody does that. But there's one place you can stay in a hotel. So we flew there, we stayed in the hotel, and when everybody had left, 1 o'clock, we went there, and it was absolutely all alone in this amazing monument. So. That's my travel key. My big secret, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Now, before Super Mario Brothers 64, which was the first time a lot of us heard your voice, yes. you taught children how to type, myself included, actually. Yippee! Mario teaches typing. Mario teaches typing. Can you tell us a little bit about how that one worked? Sure. Well, first I did a real-time animation system. I did that for five years, uh, where it was just a, a, a hidden camera, hidden microphone, and the head of Mario, which is what you see in Mario 64, you know, thank you very much for playing my game. Um, and that character I was doing live, and uh, we did that for five years before I got the phone call, Mr. Miyamoto would like you to be Mario in a game. Woohoo! <laughs> so that was a, a glorious and fabulous day, needless to say. But um, doing Mario Teaches Typing, you know, doing the improv would have been so great because I just see people walking by and say, oh, look, he, it's Minnie Mouse hat. Yippee, you know. And he, he, suddenly a dialogue starts, or, or look, it's a Mario hat. I love a Mario hat. And suddenly you have a dialogue going with somebody, which was amazing. And I was the first person in the world to do this technology for a living. And it worked so well. It was supposed to be a one-off. It worked so well. We had so much fun. that, And I made people laugh enough so that they said, why don't you come back? We'll do it again. And then I... I tried to cement the deal by making everybody laugh. All right, come back again. And then uh, by, by a certain point, I was Mario. And that was, that was the Mario in the game. So I, I really made it persistently to be forever doing this character that I fell in love with. But Mario teaches typing. Uh, it was like fundamentals or typing was the first thing that I ever just you know, consciously went in for a session to do as Mario. And the, 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 the way the script was written was, you know, uh, you, know you failed. Um, to try it again, you know, and I, and I looked at that and I thought, now, my life in improv has taught me and my life in general has taught me, I never do things that are harmful and kids get to hear enough, no, that was wrong and don't do that and da da da, you know, try it again. And I said, can I just change this a little bit? And he said, sure. He was a producer, he didn't know what the character was, only I did. And I, so I said, that was great, but I know you can do even better, let's try again. And he goes, okay. And that was the tenor of that whole typing thing, which is the tenor of the whole character. Love, respect, caring, you know, and, and joy and happiness. And of course, falling in love with the princess. <laughs> you know, but that's, that's the cornerstone of my, my characters, <coughs> excuse me, is never hurt anybody from your comedy. Never be, the, you know, because it's, it's very easy and it's very funny, but it hurts somebody. And I won't hurt one person to make a thousand people laugh. That doesn't make any value to me or any sense. And the, the, character, the, the, the reason that I learned that was 
I met a guy uh, in my first acting class who had been, uh, you know, he was just a stutter. He had a stutter. And I said, have you always had this? He said, no, on my 21st birthday, I went to see a comedian in Las Vegas with my friends. We had a dinner theater. We had a, all very laughing. I mean, great time. All of a sudden, dinner's done, and it's, you know, hey, turn the lights on. It's somebody's birthday here. Stand up, kid. And I stood up, and he said, oh, look at that ugly kid. Look at that pimply face, fat so, you know. And he just kept making bad jokes, and they were all about me. But the more he joked, the more people laughed, and I got more and more embarrassed and felt smaller and smaller until I, I well, basically, I disappeared. And he woke up in the morning with a stutter, and he had it ever since. So I, th you know, for me, it's like a marker. Never, never, never be hurtful. I love that. <coughs> Thank you, Thank so, you. so much. I mean, we can't, we, nobody's perfect. We can't be perfect, but we can try. You know, we can all, and you don't know what's going to happen in your life, but you can control how you respond to it, you know? Well, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting you a few times over the years, just at conventions, and you spread so much joy. Oh. And you've just always been so kind to Thank everybody. You. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you. It's the one thing that I have. I mean, to me, everything in my life is a gift, you know? I, I've been so fortunate, and it's what I wish for everybody, is that you find what you love to do in life, that you find your joy, your bliss, whatever you call it. Look for your happiness and your joy. And what, what gives you the juice of life? It says, oh, I love that. And then follow that. Go for it. The, explore your passions and your joy. Always looking for the love in any situation that you can create it in or find it in. You know, and, and, and I, I promise you, life has a different flavor to it when you do that, when you are trying. You know, and I'm, gosh, I'm not perfect. Mario's perfect. <laughs> but I'm not. You know, I have all kinds of days where I'm a lot more Waluigi than I am Mario. <laughs> you know? But right, man. Yeah, but you... <laughs> But you keep trying, you know. You, 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 the great thing about life is if you're doing something and it has a negative impact, you can stop or just do something different. And the way to do that, I think the best way, is to become your own best friend, to, to learn how to appreciate yourself the way you appreciate other people, you know. The way you treat your best friend, you would never talk to them the way you talk to yourself. But the way we all have that third eye that's, you know, that, that's looking from the outside. Oh, you idiot, you know. Oh, that was completely stupid, you know. And you go, wait a minute, stop that. You have to learn how to say, stop that. Shut up if you have to. Demand the end of that negative voice because you deserve the kindness for yourself that you give everybody else, right? Simple to say, a lifetime challenge. A question for you. Mario yeah. and Luigi have, you know, their, their share of companions yeah. in the games. Who would you rather have as a companion, Polter Pop or Yoshi? Mm. Well, I have to say from my perspective, it's, it's definitely Yoshi. Yeah. I mean, the perfect pet. And then more. <laughs> oh, I love Yoshi. I love Polter Pop too. That was such a nice surprise. The, the people that make uh, that game, Next Level Game, uh, in conjunction with, with Nintendo, they're the nicest people, and they know every frame of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody in that building seems to know exactly what comes next. And I, I love that level of intricate, intricate knowledge and, and passion for the game. I think it's the, the great thing about Nintendo, I think, for me, one of the many great things is the passion has always driven the technology. You know, the, the passion for the joy of fun moved it off of a single screen to a side motion, you know, a, a lateral motion of a game. And that joy led to the three dimensions and then off the couch and then, you know, what comes next? Care, take your fabulous system everywhere you go, you know? It's in, in, in it's the technology always has to catch up to the idea. So how did you develop the voices for Wario and Waluigi? Ah. <laughs> Well, Mario I was doing, uh, you know, as in a real-time animation system, and people used to ask for Luigi, and we didn't have one, so I pretended like Luigi was off the camera over there, and I had to, I couldn't move my mouth, so I, I talked like this, you know, and I had to feel sound like my brother, so I talk like this, you know. And then one day I went in to see a, a, a consumer electronics show uh, to perform as Mario Live, and there was this gorgeous character, Wario, you know, and they said, do a voice for him. I said, all right, all right, all right. You know, and, and it was kind of a little bit based on a friend of mine that worked at the, at the time at the, over there. And, oh, have a rotten day. Yeah. You know. 
and that stuck. And you know, and then one day I went in. I think it was, I think it was Mario Tennis, Super Mario Tennis. And there was this gorgeous character, Waluigi. You know, and he, you know, I was like, you know. And I start finding that voice. I said, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. You know, with the arms flopping around. And I, I always try to. It's like. Uh, Wario is the nemesis of Mario. Mario is love and joy and happiness. Wario is that angry sort of, you know, and, and Luigi is trepidatious and fearful, but always finds his courage, and while Luigi is full of self-pity, you know, which is a, a terrible energy, because it gives you justification to do anything you want in life, you know, in a serious level. But on a comedy level, it's like, it's like, ah, everybody cheating but me. Oh, hello, Mr. Eyeball guy, you know. So he's cheating while he com accuses everybody else of cheating. It's, it's perfect for, for me. So that's what I did. So who's the most fun to voice? Oh, the most fun to voice for me is Mario, because I love that character. I love the joy and the optimism, the fun, the, the, the silliness of it. It's really great. But I am more of a, a Luigi. I'm definitely second born, taller than my brother, had to run faster, jump higher to, to escape him, basically, when we were kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> No, you had mentioned, I think, yesterday in the panel how Wario tends to be the most taxing on your voice. Yes. How long, like, when you have to record for Wario, like, how long is a typical session for that? We do four-hour sessions, and uh, the last Wario game was, I think, four days, four-hour session, you know. And I, you know, for me, it's like I always drink water between each take. I <clears throat> put lemon and honey in there uh, to just keep things clear and lubricated, and I managed to make it all the way through. Although I did almost die of overhydration once when I was doing that. Oh, no. I was like, I want to make sure I can make it. I want to make sure I can make it. And I'm also like, oh, oh, you know, <laughs> and it's like, and, I, and I'm like, why do I feel like I'm catching the flu and I feel faint? Better look it up. Is there possible to overhydration? Overhydration. You feel faint and you feel like you're catching the flu. Oh, Ooh. well, hello. I guess I won't drink any water tonight. So I got to know. What med school did Dr. Mario attend? <laughs> Mushroom Kingdom Med School. Okay. <laughs> med School of Mushroom Kingdom. Actually, like a bank of Mushroom Kingdom. Gotcha. So do you ever, like, end up doing any... I know, because you mentioned, like, how you sometimes, like, will dream, like, as Mario. Yes, I do. Do you ever just, like, fall into character voices in life? Like, you know, you might stub your toe and all of a sudden you feel like, you know, Wario or Waluigi. You know, I don't think I do, but people say I do. So I, I, I can only see it from this side going out. It's like, ow, 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 you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, what game was the most fun to work on? Oh, that's a great question. You know, Mario 64 was super fun because it was the first time we took Mario out of the box, you know. I'd been improvising for five years, and all of a sudden it's like, well, what happens, you know, a happy sound like uh, woo or who, or, you know, woo-hoo, oh yeah, that's great, you know, to just to, to incorporate those things that I had done into new things and new ideas. And then Mario's uh, Sunshine was great. There was a lot of just new things that came into that. And the Odyssey was great, fun to work with. Super Mario 3D World, you know, that Meow. what could be more fun than kitty cats, right? That was great. I mean, they've all been so much fun. I think I'm at 125 about. It's amazing. 31 years and since uh, Mario 64, yeah, it's been over 120 games easily. You even got a Guinness World Record. Book, I right? do. I have the Guinness Book of World Records. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was at 100 back when the, 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 the last release of, of, of Smash. So <laughs> time marches on. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, for the longest time, Mario and Sonic were rivals. But now yes. they hang out in the Olympics together. I, I can't believe it. I know. I never thought I'd see it. Yeah, yesterday, I saw a guy dressed as, 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 as chronic, uh, Sonic. <laughs> and there was a little Mario just, you know, hang, high-fiving him. And I, and I wanted to say, don't touch that guy, you know. <laughs> but I didn't because I thought, now that is so cute. They're just loving each other up and having a great time. That, and they started racing up and down the hall. I don't know. That's adorable. As long as they don't have a javelin, I'm okay. <laughs> well, I think we're going to hand it over to the audience. Okay. That's okay. Sure. All right, so where is our wonderful mic runner? We've got, okay. There he and is. You guys could just line up behind him, please. Oh, he's going to be the mic stand. Yes. 
No, there's a whole lot of us, so let's stick to one question at a time so we can get through okay. as many people as possible. And Chris is going to be helping you guys out. You can practice an asking the question to him first, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, the only thing I can say is I, I can't really talk about the movie. Right. I, don't know if you know, I can't talk about the movie. I can't t uh, talk about future projects either because, of course, we all sign non-disclosure agreements, which if we disclose, we lose our job. I like my job. Hi. Wait. Hi. Hi. Uh, working? Yeah. Oh, okay. Working? Okay, good. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, is there any particular observation you noticed uh, be between the older generations of Mario fans like myself that grew up with, you know, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, 3, et cetera, and the newer generations that are growing up now uh, that grew up with, say, Super Mario Sunshine, Mario Odyssey, the, the newer games? Yeah. You know what's amazing to me? That's a great question. I, I, you know, everybody's enthusiastic. Everybody loves Mario, including me, of course. Uh, what's fun is that the new generation is going back and playing the retro games and getting into those. As I, I asked it like today, I asked like an eight-year-old, "What's your favorite game?" Is it Sunshine? I'm like, really? <laughs> so it always surprises me. And the wonderful thing is, you know, the the the, the generation that started with Sunshine in '64 or before that are now playing these new games and still enjoying those. I, I think it's marvelous. I'd say, I, when I was 50, 16 years ago, I was in Germany, and this, this uh, soldier wanted to talk to me. He was at a military base, and I could see him waiting to talk with me, and there was nobody there. I said, come on up. He says, hi. Well, I just want to say, sir, your grandkids must be very proud of you, sir. And I said, grandkids? I'm only 50 years old. He goes, well, my dad's 48, and he's got three grandkids with, you know. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Uh, you know, but you know, life happens fast, and it's amazing. Now, I guess I'm four generations. You know, I, the people come up. I used to play with my grandfather. Now I'm playing with my kids. I used to, but you know, it's just, it's just so beautiful. So all the fans are marvelous to me. Thank you, thank you. That's a lovely question. Oh, here's a question. Hi. So first of all, thank you so much for your words on just kindness and positivity, because we always need more of that. Thank you. Uh, second of all, my question is, who do you main in Smash? Who, who, who's my main in Smash? I, I am so terrible at Smash. I always play Mario, but it really, truly doesn't matter if I go like this and play or go like this, because the result is the same. I mean, it's just, I, 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 I always play as Mario, and I forget who I am sometimes. I'm just, so much is happening. I'm like, ah! Fun game for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a lovely question. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hey, you're a big Charlotte, uh, Charlotte hero to me, by the way. Thank you. And uh, my main question is, like, when it comes to the recording process of, uh, like, newer games, um, do you record every single new game? And do you have to go to Japan or... It's Seattle? a big secret, that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so I have recorded in Japan, mm -hmm. Seattle, Los Angeles, F Florida, uh, Holland... England. I, I just record everywhere. I actually, I, have, I, have a, I always carry a microphone with me in case there's a job. That's a typical actor, very optimistic. But I, I call myself the Under the Covers Productions because I literally put pillows out, put my microphone in there, plug it into my phone, and I do national commercials and web things right live like that. It's, it's amazing how technology has come. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. But of course, you miss those days when you always used to have an audition and all the actors went into the studio or a job and everybody's in the studio. Now I just work in a void. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Don't you look wonderful? Thank you. Hi. Well, who's your character? My, the character I'm dressed up as? Yeah. I, I'm Kelly from the Squid Sisters, um, Flecked in the Squid Sisters. Marvelous. That's Thank really you. great. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much. My question is, if Bowser, Bowser Jr. and the Kooplings became good guys, what would Mario and Luigi do? <laughs> We'd probably party with them and have fun, you know? Make sandwiches and cake. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. That's a lovely question. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if there was peace in the world? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Okay. So um, my question is, well, what is your opinion on past Mario voices, like others aside from yours, like uh, Captain Lou Albano and... Uh, the late Bob Hoskins, of the course. Hoskins. Well, I was doing Mario's voice uh, between those two. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had never heard of Mario when I crashed the audition. 
I had never heard of Nintendo when I crashed the audition. So they didn't have much influence on me. And then I don't think I saw Lou's work until 10 years later. And I, saw, I watched the, the Mario movie two or three years later, but I knew which way I was going. You know, uh, to me, I, did, I, I intentionally, when I crashed the audition, he said, you know, Italian plumber from Brooklyn. And I thought, hey, get out of my face. I'm waking here. And I thought, I don't want to do that, because what if there are children in the audience? They, they don't want to hear somebody that's mean and rough. And, and I don't want to be mean and rough all day. I want to be somebody who's more fun. And luckily, I'd played Gremio and Tammy the Shrew. A nice Italian guy, local like this. I thought, make him younger, and then make up a video, a video game. What do I know about video games? But wacka, 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 and nothing. So I made up a, a whole thing about food and didn't stop until the tape ran out. Side note, did you ever try out for Hotel Mario? Pardon me? Did you ever try out for Hotel Mario? Hotel Mario, I know, I've never seen Hotel Mario. Bring it by, is it, is it, is there somebody else in that voicing or? Yeah, it's full of CDI, it's like the memes and stuff like that. Oh, okay, no, I've never seen it, I'm sorry. I've just never, I live a, sh I'm not missing much. I was gonna say I live a sheltered life, but I guess not. I, uh, <laughs> I was gonna ask, what's been your favorite non-Mario or non-Nintendo project you've been, you've voice acted on? Oh, that's fabulous. Well, I can tell you, uh, there's one that I just did that, that I can't talk about that was really fabulous, um, but you'll hear about it in, in the next couple of months. That that's makes me very happy. Um, I love doing Ratchet and Clank because the voice I, you know, the voice that I chose was was based on a friend of mine who passed away just, just recently before I did that voice. Uh, and, and I thought, well, as a tribute to him, I'll, I'll do that, you know? So I did that, boy, I love that. But I love every game. You know, I think I've done a total of well over 4,000 jobs as an actor. And, and you know, it's just, you just yeah, I just love them all. You know, it's just like every single thing, is, it's fabulous fun for me. And, and all good memories, although I don't remember a lot of things. I love it when people bring a game by and they say, this happened just yesterday. And I said, you're in this. I am? And I look at it and I'm like, no, I, I, I'm not. I look in the back, Charles Martinet. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's me, yeah. No idea what it was. That's the great part about getting older. You just, you just, you know. Oh boy, you know, it's like when you look at yourself in the mirror, no wrinkles at all. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. <laughs> of course, I feel a little blurry today, but yes, hi. Hey there. Um, so I just want to say I really do enjoy your work. Thank you. It's not you. really a question. Um, keep up the good work, and uh, I can also do Mario. No, it's a me, Mario. Woohoo! Very nice. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I could do, I also came to do Luigi. Mario. <laughs> Great, man. Thank you very much. That's very keep, good. Keep up the good work, man. Thank you so much. And thank you for playing my games. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I was going to ask for someone who has had such an incredible um, career and inc an incredible journey over the last several years. What What's your biggest piece of advice for someone who's just starting out in voice acting? Boy, for somebody who's just starting out in voice acting, I would say go to uh, the the Deep Bradley Baker's website, I want to be a voice actor dot com. Mm -hmm. I think his work is unbelievable, and you can spend a decade learning about voiceover acting. Acting is all the same. It's all the same. It's all the truth that you're finding inside of the character, which is inside of yourself. So introspection is an important part of being an actor. It's just a question of size, you know? A film actor has to feel something, but if I feel something as Mario, what happened? Nothing, you know? I've gotta, you know, oh no! It's gotta be big and strong, but that oh no has to be as real as the guy who goes, wow. You know, it has to be just as real. It's a question of size and dimension. The biggest piece of advice I would say is learn how to have fun. Learn how to be the, ball, the dog chasing the ball on the beach, who's not wondering, well, uh-oh, what if I get sand in my shoes? Uh-oh, I hope I'm gonna bring this ball back the way he wants me to. It's just, I'm gonna get the ball, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. Because when you're doing that, you're bringing yourself and your interpretation of a character to whatever it is. But it's very easy, and most actors do this, it's that same third eye, sort of like, watch yourself, you know, Clorox, 
the better bleach, you know? You know, it is like cl Clorox, the better bleach. And you can do it perfectly, but it's not real, and it's not you, and you'll never get it. I did um, an audition to, actually, I didn't realize at the time, but uh, to be a backup voice uh, for Goofy uh, uh, many years ago. And I, and I knew the guy that had moved to Disney to do this audition, and I did what I thought was the best, of the great voice of it, and I thought, I, this I got, I got this. And I didn't get it. And he said, I asked him uh, years later, I said, you know, I, I, I thought my audition was, was, was pretty good. He goes, you know, I have to say, you're, you sounded more like Goofy than anybody else that we listened to. And I, I'm like, <laughs> he said, but you weren't Goofy. And there are other people who didn't sound as much like Goofy, but they were. So acting really, truly is being. And you have to get rid of this interpretation and go from here. The audition is the end in itself. You know, if you look at the paradigm, 99% of actors unemployed 99% of the time, you'll, you'll just sit there in anxiety about it. But if you look at the perspective like, oh boy, I get to go to audition. Oh, I love this character. I love the beady eyes. The beady eyes make me What if I do a big drum? Oh, I like that, you know. The, the, when you're doing that, that gives you the opportunity to open the door, to let the opportunity come in. Thank you so much. You bet, but it's the same thing in life, isn't it? As you love someone, just performing the act of love, giving of yourself, is what really works. Doing something because, oh, that's a loving thing to do. If I get flowers, that's loving, but it's not. It's like, oh my gosh, I love this person so much, I want to get flowers. It's so different. Same flowers. Thank you. Oh, don't you look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Um, my question is, uh, if you could spend a day in a Mario game with the characters, what, which one would it be? And oh, I'd always be Mario. Be I just yeah. love <laughs> Mario so much. You mean, in, in a, uh, which game would I be in? Or which? Yeah, and what would you do in it? Oh, boy. Well, I'm a sandbox kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably go into Odyssey because I just, I love the idea of like becoming a dinosaur, then a tree, then a, you know, <laughs> a Goomba. I just, I just become everybody I want to be. That would be just like hilarious fun for me. <laughs> Who would you be? What game? Mm, Super Mario Galaxy, that one's my oh, favorite. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's what I, I dream of, that sort of flying. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I changed my mind. I want to be in Galaxy now. <laughs> da, 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 Hello, da. Charles. Hi. Uh, no offense to Mario, I love Mario, but I'm personally a bigger fan of Kirby, another Nintendo franchise. Oh, sure. He's my favorite. <laughs> uh, you know, first of all, thank you for being the voice of Mario for over 30, almost 30 years. Like, I'm really glad that you're still voicing him even today, and it really means a lot, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my question, uh, for context, first of all, um, a few years ago, the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, Roger Craig Smith, yes. he did a, his best voice impression of Mario. <laughs> so it got me wondering, have you ever done a voice impression no. of Sonic the Hedgehog? No, I, I never have, you know. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't even, you know, at one point, I did an audition uh, when they were, the, the, the Simpsons had just started up. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's like every actor in the nation gets this call, come and do an audition for Bart Simpson and all the Simpson people. And I'm like, wow, I guess they're going to cast a new thing, or maybe it's a video game. Whatever. And I go there, and I'm, yay, and I do my, uh, uh, my audition. But then I find out that what they were doing was the cast wanted to be paid, like, like really be paid for it, because it's the number one show on TV. And they wanted to be paid for it. And the studio's response was, okay, we'll just replace you then. And so they went out, and I was so ashamed of myself for auditioning for somebody else's job, because that belonged to them, you know? And, and, and we needed to be in solidarity that that's their job. I'm not gonna audition for this. That's somebody else's life there, that they brought that character to life, and that, that's theirs. So I'm a big believer in that level of, of loyalty among performers. So I don't do other people's auditions. I don't do, I would never do that again. Not even for fun? Pardon me? Not even for fun? Oh, for fun.
I'm, I might do it for fun, yeah, but I'd have to, I'd have to listen to the guy. I, I, I can you tell me what Sonic sounds like? I have no idea right now in my brain. Hey, I'm Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. Was that it? Is that it? I can't do it. <laughs> I have to practice, okay. I'm a perfectionist. Next time I see you, I'll try it. All right, you're welcome. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sonic. Hello, Charles Martinet. I'm fast. Hi. Um, is <laughs> Hi, I'm Sonic. I'm fast. Thank you. Uh, he actually, 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 like my same question. So, like, thankfully, oh. I have another one now. Sure. Two, um, is there a Mario game that you found like really challenging, or it, you couldn't really get into? Uh, you already said Smash Bros. But like, if that's your answer, can you get something else? No. <laughs> I love Smash Brothers. I just, I'm just terrible at it. That's all. I'm just, I'm just terrible. You know, I can, I get the, the, my skill level in Mario games. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can always find out the princess is not in this castle. <laughs> if she's in the next one, I half the time never find that out either. Is there you a know? Mario game you couldn't beat then? Uh, is there a game I could not beat? Yes, uh, it's every Mario game. <laughs> I've never rescued the princess, but I've watched my, my niece's boyfriends and them defeat Bowser left, right, and center. I'm like, yeah, that was me there, yeah. <laughs> you know? Thank you. I but hope it you wasn't do Mario, me. I hope you do Mario forever now. I hope whoever like, replaces you in the far distant future is as good as you. Bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. First of all, I want to say this is a huge honor for being able to ask you a question. That's Thank uh, you. Mario was a huge part of my childhood growing up. Yay. But I, I had a question for him, but I threw it out the window after I found out that you had gone for the part of Goofy. Do you remember the, I guess the the I, I guess the term is dialect or uh, the the way you tried to form Goofy? Do you do you remember how you? Oh, you know, I him? started doing Goofy when I was like four years old. The way, I, I always say the reason I'm an actor is because I failed at this one audition that I knew I was right for, the only audition I ever had done to that point. But really, the reason I, I became an actor, I think, behind it all, is I used to love to make my mom laugh, you know? So we, we you know, we, we're, this is how old I am. We, we had the Jackie Gleason show. And there's a guy on there, you know, hi, you Joe. Hello, you Mr. Donaghy. And I would do that and she'd crack up. And I'm like, okay, how else can I do here? You know, and she would play the Wicked Witch and chase us around the house. And I was terrified. I'd like hide in the linen closet. And she knew I was there and say, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and I'd squeal with the light. So that, you know, that children are all actors. They're all brilliant at it, you know. Then we develop our little brain that says, no, you're not. You know, or that, that, that negative thing, and, and then we start out being out of touch with it. But yeah, it was like making my mom laugh was really <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, sir. You. It's Thank a, you a, very again, much. It's a huge honor. Thank you. Thank you. It's -a me. Hello there. I have a question. Sure. Since the Mario movie is coming up, uh, how do you feel about. Um, Chris Pratt voicing Mario instead of you. Well, that's very sweet to ask that question. I really can't answer anything about the movie because I have signed non-disclosure agreements about everything. And I never talk about things because I, I'm the one that will tell the most. So I'm, uh, not, I'm really not allowed to say anything, but, but thank you for that, that. How about a different question? Okay, um, here's, here's one. How terrifying would it be if Mario could go Super Saiyan? If you go what? Oh, well, that wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ultra powerful. Well, you know, he does become the giant Mario. I love that when he's got the big feet clomping around. My, one of my favorite power-ups of all time, though, was the little propeller hat. Remember that? And he's like, he's up, he's got this giant red hat on, and he keeps moving his feet as though he's walking. I think that's exactly what I would do. I love the cat, the gold cat. Mm. Thank you very oh, much you're for your welcome. questions, though. Cheers. <laughs> gold cat. And Princess Peach Kitty. Hello. Hi there. Don't you look fabulous? I do. Yay. <laughs> That's great. I have a question. Yes. Is it related with Mario Karts? Which one is your favorite um, racetrack? Oof. 
I, 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 I love them all. I can't do Rainbow Road, but I, I love them all, you know? I just, the, you know, going through the ship is always one that I enjoy because I can't help but think about eating. <laughs> you know, you go through the dining room sort of thing. I was like, just sort of eating. I do like food. When I, I always say that when I, when I, when I you know, in the, in the penguin suit, I always want sushi afterwards. <laughs> But I'm that way too in life. I, you know, I go to an aquarium and it's just like I just I start, I, I, like Pavlov's dog. So I walk in the door. I'm like, oh, octopus. Oh, fish. You know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I should stay home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Uh, nice shirt. Like everybody else, I do appreciate your work very much. It's Thank been in my you. life pretty much since I was about four years old. Yay. Um, I do want to ask, yes. out of Mario, Luigi, Wario, or Waluigi, do you have a favorite voice line that you like to read? Uh, a favorite voice line? I really don't, you know. I just, I love the, it's me, Mario. Luigi number one, ho, ho. Have a rotten day. I mean, that's, the, that's what just pops into my mind whenever I think of those characters as, the anchor to them all. Mm -hmm. My friend and I, um, my roommates, we came up with a game one day on a car trip huh. um, where we're both big nerds of the, the sandbox games. Huh. And um, we had just started making Mario noises and see if the other one could identify what game it's from. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> Aren't you good, um, wow. It was very fun. Uh, it was on a long, it was a 14 hour car trip, so we had plenty <laughs> of time to go. But uh, ever since then I've been curious about that. So Fat. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wow. Why one? Yeah, yeah, yes. Why are Mario and Bowser yeah, enemies yeah, enemies in the regular games. Yeah, 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 but but yeah, yeah, but but yeah, but go but yeah, but do go karting and and, and, and yeah and, and board games together. Oh, putting the board games together with a, with a go karting. Well, that would be fun. I've never actually never played the. No, uh, I'm, 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 I'm asking you why Bowser and Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah how we go from enemies to friends. Uh, you know, that's a good question. Lucky for me, I'm just a voice actor. Yeah. You know? I look at it and I go, oh, that's fun. You know, it's all fun to me, however they want to do it. There are some games where Luigi is absolutely petrified. The first Smash Brothers where Luigi was in was like, ah! Yeah. You know? And then he gets much more courageous in the, in the subsequent ones. So it's all a journey of exploration for me that I love. Yeah. Every minute well, of well, it. Well, I was curious yeah, about, about, like, in, yeah, in the characters themselves. Yeah, yeah, they have a relationship. How, how we can go from, how we how how we can, how Bowser can go from hating Mario, yeah, in the games, to, to being best, yeah, yeah, to, to being to being friendly co competitors with each other in the card stuff. And yeah, I think it's just with the writers or the creative yeah, teams are just yeah, always. Yeah, that, that's it. But I, I have one more. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what is the most fun Mario game to do? <laughs> the most fun to do? Yeah. Oh gosh, I've done 125. They've all been so much yes, fun. Mario 64 was great fun. Sunshine Galaxy, Mario Kart Double Dash was amazingly fun. And yeah, thank you. Hi there. Hi, I have a question. Would sure. You, would you rather have another year of Luigi or a year of Waluigi? Oh. I'm happy with whatever they come up with. I think that the idea of a, wa a year of Waluigi would be hilarious. But, you know, I love Luigi, and that year of Luigi was hilarious fun for me. So I say both. Okay. Yeah. I would prefer to have Luigi because Luigi is just adorable. I know. He's just the sweetest character to me. I also talk to myself as Luigi, too. I will <laughs> okay, you better get out of bed. Get out of bed. Yeah. Okay, so I know you just mentioned how you don't want to like take over anybody's current war, so yeah. I don't know how much of that is going to impact this answer, but I thought I might as well ask anyway. Sure. Um, so obviously your voice is very affiliated with the Mario franchise, so, but uh, there are plenty of other Nintendo franchises out there, so my question is, like, uh, what non-Mario Nintendo character from any other franchise would you like to voice? You know, that's a great question. What else would I like to do aside from Mario franchise? I, you know, I, I will say, I, I'm a very content person. You know, I've got friends that are just rabid artists at any time. You know, look at a man like, like William Shatner. He's writing a book. He's producing music. He's writing music. He's writing TV shows. He's directing TV shows. He's producing. He's executive producing. He's doing these shows. He's, you know, he's just like amazing. And for me, it's like, I come, I do these shows, I have a great time. It's like, 
I wonder if there's a beach we can go sit on somewhere, you know? I'm looking for the Isle Delfino, you know? It's just like that. So, so I, I don't have that sort of drive. I also think, you know, I'm 66. I've done thousands of jobs, and it's been a tremendous honor. And I do the characters that I love the most in the world. And it's like good to let other people coming up to have the opportunity. All right, Ben. That's my, that's my true belief, absolutely. It's, it's like they, they need the opportunity. And it's, there's some great artists out there. All right, this is going to be our last question. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Uh, uh, I was wondering, has there ever been a time when voicing Mario has been, like, stressful or overwhelming? No. It's all just fun. <laughs> it's just all pure fun. You know, it's like the, the creative teams I work with, wonderful people who just, you know, love doing the, the, the writing, the scripting, the, the, the animators. All these people just love it. And we go on this session, and it doesn't matter where an idea comes from, doesn't know what that idea is, the exploration, the answer is always yes. It's, you know, let's try this, let's try that. It's just, it's just pure fun. It really is. It's why I wish for everybody, find what you love to do in life, because you know, it's, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's weird to say, because it's not working, if it, you know, whatever that expression is, but it really is that it's a, the issue is joy. It, you know, find something that gives you joy that you do. Don't suffer through your work so you can have joy on the weekend when you get, get you know, that, that's, that's painful. You know, find what you love to do, where you love to live. Uh, my, my dear friend and agent, he said, you know, he always would think about where he wants to live because that's important to him. And then figure out what to do to, to be able to live there. And if that's the thing for you, then do that. You know, or, you know, I, I want to be a race car driver. Well, you may not have the talent to be a race car driver because that does take a certain something. But you can race cars, you can do, figure out what that is, and you can, oh, there's always coaching, there's always teaching, there's always training, there's always working at the racetrack. There, there are just things that will manifest. You, you might not be the perfect voice actor, but maybe one day somebody says, hey, would you help me cast this, this little anime I'm doing? You cast it, and it's like, oh my goodness, this is great, I love doing this. And there you are, because your resonance, you know, is rising to this place that the, the reality has to follow to that. It's like two heart cells from, you know, isolated, beating in different rhythms. Either one goes up to the other one, the other one goes down to the other one, or they meet somewhere in the middle. But if your resonance is going, then you're demanding that life come up to you. And it's always, you know, you have to fight your negative beliefs as well to get rid of those. Fight that third eye, that negative ego that's, you know, railing away at you how you're not able to do what you want or, you know. But you gotta get rid of those negative beliefs. One of mine was, you can either do what you want in life or be happy. Which one? So I wanted to be an actor at suddenly, and it's like, well, I can't, I can't make a living. I had to destroy that belief in order to be able to enjoy success. So that's what I wish for everybody. Success and love and joy and happiness and a lot of peace on earth. I hope we as a country unify, as a people unify, as humanity we unify to make life better for everybody. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you very much and thank you for playing my games. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to my table in a little bit and I'm just autographing all day today and we do autographs and photographs and stuff like that at my table. And I think we have photo ops, but I'm not sure if anybody could get those from online, so maybe we don't. I don't know. But I, my, uh, my Facebook is Charles Martinet. My Instagram is Charles Martinet, it's a me. And my Twitter is Charles Martinet. So I hope to see you there or see you over at the table. And thank you very much. Thank you. Number so one. Much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, the lovely one. We will be clearing the room uh, for this the next section, so if everyone could uh, go ahead and make your way out, and we will have everybody come back in. Thank you.